Hi there, this is Matt at State of Flux, and happy Friday the 13th, everybody. Um, we are moving on to our second Friday the 13th movie, last Friday the 13th. I reviewed the original, the classic, Sean S. Cunningham, Friday the 13th. This time I do Steve Miner's Friday the 13th Part 2. Um, why is this movie a franchise? I don't get it. This movie is just an ugly rehash of the first movie, uh, but takes out any creative uh, energy that the first one had, um, right down to the subversive killer. Uh, this one just imagines a world where what if Jason didn't die, and Jason is the killer. I will say, I do prefer burlap sack Jason. Uh, to Hockey Mask Jason. I think it's a scarier look. However, it was much scarier in The Town That Dreaded Sundown, which came out about five years prior. Um, this movie uh, is bereft of any creative energy. Um, however, I have to acknowledge that it is very well made. The scares uh, are effective. The uh, use of tension largely um, amplified by Harry Manfredini's score um, really kind of work for the movie, and maybe that's what it is. Or maybe Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert were right when they talked about these movies on their show, Siskel and Ebert, um, when Siskel asserted that uh, these movies are only popular because you can see the piercing of the flesh and the whole factor of, oh my god, I saw it. It happened in front of me, but I'm in a safe place and it's okay, um, and it's some kind of visceral release. However, whatever it is, it's not for me. I'm a fan of the slasher film. I gave a, a very positive review to the first Halloween last year. Um, this movie is kind of the genre at its ugliest, and with this movie specifically, this is a franchise, and it's hard not to argue this being the case, especially while watching this film, that does in fact hate women. The way women are talked about, the way women are photographed in this film, is just stunningly degrading. And right down to the fact that you have your final girl in this movie peeing herself, um, allowing her absolutely no dignity. Um, Ginny is no Lori. She is no Nancy. She is no Sydney or Gale. Ginny is a forgotten character by the end of this film. And yeah, maybe it's because the actress, uh, Amy Steele, I want to say, chose not to continue working on the franchise uh, afterwards. But regardless, her character was nothing to write home about. There was no character th there. The movie just needed a final person to be in the uh, the film, and she was selected amongst the fodder. Um, and it's hard not to argue that, because um, originally this film was going to have no survivors. Uh, and it was sort of uh, pivoted at the last second, I think, uh, due to studio pressure to uh, give the film a final girl and guy. Uh, but. The way that the women are talked about in this movie, like the Paul character, the other guy that survives, is uh, doing like, what we need to do here, some safety tips, and he takes a stab at women uh, who are menstruating. Uh, and uh, the camera cuts to a couple girls who look at each other like, oh no. Uh, and the way that the women are photographed through um, their sexual hyper-over-sexualization uh, is just kind of gross. Um, none, nobody has any character, uh, and this is one of those tropey horror movie things that happen largely because of movies like this one that take the hero characters of the previous movie and kill them in the opening scene. Uh, the death of Alice from the first movie is uh, disappointing, to say the least. So much so that the actress didn't even know that was going to happen. She claimed she never even got a script and was surprised to find out that she was getting killed. She'd asked to have a reduced role because she was dealing with like a stalker or something like that. Um, but she didn't know she was going to be offed. And uh, that just shows you how little this franchise or the, uh, the 
producers cared about it. They were the first Friday the Thirteenth was made as a cash grab for uh, Halloween. The fact that it had any artistic merit uh, stems from the fact that it had strong artists behind the camera who were uh, good at what they did. Now, I think this movie is scarier than the first Friday the 13th. That is true. The artistry there is strong. However, even uh, what little artistry was in the screenplay for the first Friday the 13th has been completely evaporated in this one. Um, it's easy to say, uh, and easy to see, that I did not like this movie. I give it one star because it is effective in achieving those scares. It, whether I like it or not, created a, rith a rich mythology for Jason. This movie works if you've never seen the first Friday the 13th. Because if you have seen the first Friday the 13th, there's no reason why Jason wouldn't have been able to access his mother. And then none of this uh, Camp Crystal Lake bullshit would have ever happened. Um, this movie had to create a uh, male... Uh, serial killer, uh, taking the one thing away from that first movie uh, that was at all compelling. I liked that the first movie was an inverse of Psycho. It wasn't the boy who was uh, embodying his mom, it was the mom who was embodying the dead boy. Uh, that was kind of an interesting, compelling thing with the first Friday the 13th. This one is even void of that. You're just given a uh, Jason that is uh, called genuinely unfortunate names, um, throughout the film, who is, um, severely disfigured with, like, the, uh, elephant man kind of syndrome, uh, that has facial abnormalities that grew up, uh, not knowing human experience and only knows violence and killing, uh, why, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, and then it even kills the uh, Harbinger character from the first movie that was just there as pure warning. Uh, all of it is uh, just kind of a waste. Uh, why, do, why is this movie so mean-spirited? Why does it degrade all the women characters so, so much and allow none of them any semblance of dignity? Um, that's something that is thankfully um, moved away from in later installments in the franchise. Few movies get quite as bad as this one, yet this one is one of the more fondly remembered ones. And I have no idea why. Is it because it's the first one that genuinely introduced Jason? Probably. But um, explain to me what it is that you find appealing about this. I, I think the kills in this movie are even kind of weak sauce. I thought they were better kills in the first one. They might be more graphic in this one, but they're essentially more graphic reinterpretations of the same exact kills from the first movie, right down to the spear through the bed thing. Um, rather than it coming up, it went down. Uh, it's just an inverse of the first movie, uh, creatively bankrupt, and I hated it. I give the movie one star, um, but let me know what you think, and uh, stay tuned for a review for uh, <coughs> Friday the 13th, part three. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and uh, if you are interested later tonight, we are, uh, tonight being Friday the 13th, uh, we uh, will have my very first fan commentary for the film Serenity, the 20, uh, 2005 Serenity, um, uh, with me and a special guest. So, uh, do stay tuned for that later tonight. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Peace.